Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back for episode 29. Week 29. 29 weeks of me working full time uninterrupted on this hotline Miami style retro anime samurai champ blue cowboy bebop style game. Uh, here's what's new with the game this week. We've got two new animations for our main character, an attacking animation, although it's really just a single frame rather than a full animation due to the incredibly fast pace of the game, and a post-dash transitional animation where our guy flips his sword from the rear-facing to the front-facing position. It adds a cool stylistic flair when you're dashing around. Gameplay-wise, I balanced the difficulty of the game's first two levels and made some adjustments to them so that they force the player to learn the game's fundamental mechanics. I suspect that the difficulty is still a little too high for the first level since I've been designing it around my own skill level, which is of course pretty high. So easy to me might still be a little too tough for somebody who's never played before, but I'm going to do some private playtesting soon to see if I'm in the ballpark there. I also decided to add a unique environmental hazard for each act in the game. For these first levels, it's going to be spikes on the floor, currently represented by these red boxes. They kill you instantly if you step on them, but you can dash over them. And I spent the majority of my time this week polishing the fine details of the gameplay and cleaning up a ton of little things that were bothering me. I improved the logic for deciding which enemy to kick objects at. I made the auto-targeting for your projectiles smarter about predicting enemy movement. I improved the logic and placeholder effects for the flashbang item. I made it easier to kick objects while dashing by making the collision detection for that more generous, along with a whole bunch of other minor bug fixes. Now I haven't spent much time on this channel going into any real detail about the behind the scenes development, but I thought this week I'd tell you guys more about a couple of other improvements I made because I find them to be interesting examples examples of the kinds of problems you have to solve in game development and maybe that'll be of interest to you. So the first thing that was bothering me was when you kick an object by running into it, you're supposed to regain energy. Now if you do that while you already have full energy, nothing happens. So you can end up in a situation in the game where let's say you're just about to hit a kickable object and you decide to dash at that moment. And in your mind, the way you think of it is, is okay, I just dashed, so I used that energy that I had, but I'm kicking this object along the way, so I regain that energy. So you're expecting that at the end of this dash, you're going to be able to dash again. But what actually happened in the game was a split second before you dashed, you actually kicked the object first when you still had the full energy, so you didn't get anything from it, and then you dashed. And then when the dash ends, you're out of energy and you end up really confused and you probably end up dying. So I fixed that by adding a tiny window right at the moment when you kick an object. It gives you about a tenth of a second long window where as long as you dash within that window, even if you kicked the object first, it'll give you an extra free dash so that effectively the game treats it as if you did dash first. So that way it always works out in your favor and the game doesn't punish you just because of being anal about the order of things. And the second thing that was pissing me off is throughout the levels, many of the rooms have various walls and blocks and other kinds of obstacles that you have to move around and you could sometimes end up getting stuck on the edges or corners of them when you're trying to dash around them to get to an enemy that's behind a corner for example and the major issue was that your UI reticle showing you where you're aiming at would suggest that you're going to be able to dash there but then when you actually go to dash sometimes you manage to slide past the corner and get to the position but other times the physics simulation decided that you just face planted right into the wall and that felt really unfair and annoying as well so I decided that the UI reticle always needed to be predictable and accurate. If it shows you that you're going to be able to get to a position, then you should always end up at that position. So the way I dealt with this is I have a thin ray cast that happens from where you're standing to where you're aiming at. And if it detects something in your way, the UI reticle will show you that it's in your way and you'll end up where the red marker is instead. But if it shows that you're going to be able to get to that position, I disable the collision on the walls so that you're guaranteed to always just fly through it. So thanks to the disabling of the collision and by keeping the ray cast fairly thin, the game is again being generous in your favor so that you don't have to worry so much about getting caught on the walls and it's pretty rare for it to happen. And now if it does happen, it is 100% your own fault and it's very predictable. The interesting things about issues like this in game development is that unless you're willing to spend a ridiculous amount of time trying to perfect it, you usually have to come up with a solution that's good enough but has to come with some kind of trade-off. In this case, the trade-off is that the gameplay obviously is a lot better now and you don't get stuck on the walls, but the downside is that because I'm disabling the collision on the walls, it is possible to put your reticle at a position that's just far enough away from the wall that it doesn't trigger the ray cast, but just close enough that the final position will actually result in you overlapping with the walls collider when the dash ends. And then I have a little bit of magic code that forces the physics simulation to update so that it pushes your collider outside 
side of the wall again. And the end result is this effect here you're seeing where just for a split second you can see that you're on top of the wall and then you get pushed out immediately. So in the end it's a great improvement to the gameplay in exchange for a small visual issue that most people will never notice. And I'd say that's a pretty good trade-off. And with regards to the game's music, from now on, every song you're hearing playing throughout the background of my videos, with perhaps the exception of some of my comedy bits, is actually music produced by our musician Alex for this game. They aren't all necessarily going to be in the final version of the game, and some of them might be works in progress as development continues, but there you go. And if you want regular weekly updates on the game, do not forget to like and subscribe, or write me a letter, or stalk me, or live under my bed, or anything else that you think you need to do to get what you need to know about this game. Okay, all right, do I have a hell of a story for you guys this week? Check this out. About a month or so ago, I get recommended to me on YouTube a video from this other channel called Studio Yarn. Okay, and it turns out this dude is making a game somewhat similar to my own. He has a first video where he's talking about how it's a Samurai Champloo inspired game. But I wasn't too worried about it because it talks about how the gameplay is inspired by Sekiro. So technically a different kind of game, even if the setting and everything else is somewhat similar. And also he's going for an open world type thing and whatnot, so pretty different in those ways. On that first video, dropped him a comment, said, hey, hey bro, wishing you all the best. I'm also making a similar kind of game that's pretty cool. Nonetheless, I was admittedly a little jealous because he only got, oh, I don't know, several thousand more views than any of my videos have. This guy has only three videos and two and a half thousand subscribers. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is this guy, has he done YouTube before? Does he just know what he's doing? Look at those thumbnails. Those are pretty nice thumbnails. I think, I think this guy knows what he's doing. And I'm a little bit jealous, but whatever. I put it aside, I stopped paying attention to it, and was just like, I'm gonna focus on my own thing, it doesn't matter, he's making a different kind of game, I got my own thing going out here, no worries. But today, on this very day, his channel popped into my head again, and I thought, oh, I wonder how it's going over there. And with a little bit of nervousness, I look up his channel, I click on the channel, I see, okay, all right, he's still got roughly the same amount of five times as many subscribers as me. And I see that he has a new video, and I go, oh, okay, I'm curious about this. As usual, several thousand more views than any of my videos. And this most recent video is about adding blood and gore effects to his game. And he starts talking about Hotline Miami. And I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> Now, okay, like, I don't know if that has anything at all to do with him looking at my channel. Who knows, that one time when I commented, did he even go to my channel? Has he watched any of my videos? I have no idea. I hope he is, because this is going to be hilarious. You see, in the game development community, people are very... They tend to be very nice to each other. They're very cooperative. Everyone wants to help each other out. I am not like this. I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm an asshole. I am a very competitive person. And I see something like this and I go, oh, it's on. Samurai Champloo, all right, all right, we both have that in common. But you couldn't just stick to your Sekiro, could you? You had to go and infringe on my territory and start talking about how, oh, oh, your game's also going to borrow from Hotline Miami. You think I'm motivated by wanting to become the world's greatest game developer anymore? No, irrelevant. All that matters now is that I will defeat you. But it gets worse. It's worse than that. This guy goes so far as to say that... Actually, I should look up what his name is. Hold on. His name's Ryan or some shit. Ryan. Yeah, this motherfucker's name is Ryan. All right, anyway. So anyway, Ryan in his video even has the gall to say that a game like Hotline Miami is carried by its blood and gore. Hotline Miami, a game carried by its gore and quick visceral deaths. Excuse me, sir? Excuse me? I go into the comments, people are being like, well, bro, Hotline Miami ain't just carried by the blood and gore. And I looked at those commenters and I thought to myself, yes, exactly. Why are you on this channel? You should be on my channel. Yes, you should, you should come and join me here. Here. Yes, come. Come to the dark side. Anyway, all of this is to say that my competitive nature has been kicked into full drive and I have no idea if this guy has ever even seen my channel or watched any of my videos. I think it would be really funny if for the next several months this guy's making his own thing, doesn't even know about me or anything, and I'm just shit-talking him like every single video. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just acting like this is some kind of hyper intense competition between me and him, and this guy doesn't even know that I exist. Well, well look, I, I just came down here to tell you it, it's not on. Oh, it's on. No, 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 it's not on. Who? it's on, all right. It isn't on, nothing's on, it's off. It's on. Now, of course, if you're into Sekiro, which is actually a game I very much enjoyed myself, perhaps you're interested in that and you can go check out that channel. And you know what, Ryan? You know what you should definitely not do? You definitely shouldn't make a video in which you talk about my channel and my game and totally play along with this and enter into a competition with me so that we both increase our publicity and become more well-known thanks to us shit-talking each other and it turns into this awesome internet phenomenon of like a fucking drama between you and me. We definitely shouldn't do that. You definitely shouldn't make videos that do that. That would be so trashy and such an obvious marketing gimmick. Surely we would not be able to increase our sales by doing that. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want regular updates on the game. And Ryan, I'll see you in hell, bud. Peace.